Hi, welcome back. I'm Linda. This morning I finished up a really pretty seascape. I am kind of excited about this one. It was really easy. I've got some nice billowy clouds here with a pretty uh, full moon, soft, flowing waters, surf, some rocks, and a couple of nice palm trees. I know you're going to love doing this one, so get your paints out, pause and paint with me. So let's get started. And here are the oil paints I use. Liquid white, titanium white, black, yellow blue, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. So I'm going right into liquid white. And I've got, a, it's made by plaid. It's about a two inch or inch and a half flat. It really works nice putting uh, this uh, liquid white on. So I'm going to put a, a thin coat all over the canvas. And then afterwards, after I got the whole thing, I'm going to just take a shop towel, fold it in half a couple times, and take all that excess white off because you don't need that much on, on it, just enough to make it slippery. So in the thalo blue, Prussian blue, and a little bit of alizarin crimson, I'm going at uh, the very top. I'm going to make a kind of a really, really dark purple sky. I'm a, I want it fairly dark way on the top there. I'm going to go all the way across. Maybe a little bit darker on the, on the corners. I'll just work my way over. Blending that in. Pulling some of that blue down, I'm going to go into white, titanium white. I'm going to just start catching uh, the edges of that blue. And I'm going to try and blend that uh, so it blends blends in well with the, with the white. I want it a little bit lighter coming down. Just work it in. And then after, after I uh, got done with this, I took a nice big brush and I went over the whole top part and I buffed it all out nice and smooth and just below the halfway mark. Still into uh, titanium white. I'm going to make the moon and I'm starting in the area right there. That's where I want my moon and I'm going to uh, put white in the center and then just Go around, just X strokes all the way around and try not to go back into that white area once once uh, you've got that. Because you want to keep fair, uh, fairly light and bright. And, and then when you're happy with it, you can go over with it over a few times. I just buff it out. Soften the edges. Now I've got a little tiny little flat brush. Um, I'm going into liquid uh, titanium white. And when I go right in the center of that light area, I'm going to press down. And then I'm going to whirl my brush. I'm going to make a little tiny circle there. And you can do it as many times as you feel. You, you know, you can get it really bright. I might have to go over it a couple, three times and then take a nice soft brush and brush over it very lightly. So I'm going into a little bit of a alizarin crimson. I'm going to go right at the center. That's where uh, the horizon line is going to be. It's a little uh, lavender center there, lavender color. And then just brush straight across. Keep your line straight. That, that is your horizon line. You might want to measure up with a ruler. Make sure you have the sides that are pretty even. And I'm just blending that in. Adding a little white. 
underneath the moon there, you're going to want that pretty bright. That is going to be the brightest area right directly underneath that moon. Then with a little bit of phthalo, brush in the sides. Leave the center part alone, though, because they're going to keep light, uh, lighting that up as you go. A little fan brush, go underneath the moon, just lightening that area up. Nice straight strokes. That's your water line. Into a little more white. Fairly, fairly good amount. I'm going to start creating some clouds up into the dark area. Little tiny circular motions. Just kind of gliding across circle, little tiny circles upward. And then I'm going to take a dry. A uh, nice dry fan brush, clean dry, and go underneath that. Don't touch the top part of that, those clouds. Just pick up a little bit white and just do little circular motions, buffing that out. See how pretty that looks? So I'm continuing on, uh, on with the cloud lines, and you can make as, as many as you want. Again, with a clean dry brush underneath that. Cloud line, just buff buff that out. I'm gonna make mine kind of going around the moon. So I'm creating some cloud lines and then just uh, buffing, softening that up. And you'll be able to go back and highlight the tops of those clouds too with a little little more white accent. And putting a little on the right side too, just kind of help balance it out a little bit. Okay, now I've got some uh, kind of a, is Van Dyke Brown a little, well actually it's titanium white with just a touch of uh, Van Dyke Brown. I wanted a tan, a great uh, light gray to tan. Uh, Far away hill, way in the back. Actually, it's got a little more gray in it. I might have put a little bit of black in there, but I just want it really uh, to look like it's uh, far in the distance. Adding a little white texture in there and uh, blotting some of that in. It's just a little texture, so you know it's got uh, some trees or something back there. So now I'm still highlighting underneath the moon, clean, dry fan brush. I'll be doing that quite a bit, uh, working my way forward, creating a horizon, uh, the landline, actually where the water is. And I found the uh, palette knife works pretty darn good. So if you can get a nice roll on the palette knife, you can uh, do this, have the same effect. Put the waves way in the distance. Because that back line's got to be uh, fairly bright. I'm working my way forward. A little bit of phthalo. Can start bringing in some more water. Nice. Keep your lines really nice and straight. Just keep going. You can leave some of those dark lines in there. Doesn't have to be perfectly blended. Because you want some of those darker streaks in there as you come forward. It'll help act, uh, accentuate waves or anything that you, water movement. You have so, a little bit of darker water there. And I'm adding a little bit of a lizard and crimson there in the bottom corner just a little bit. And some more dark in the center part. Kind of gearing up for my uh, 
shoreline coming up. Another nice white area in the middle. You don't have to brush it too much in, but you want to see some some white lines in there. It's like water movement in the just in the back. And this is a real pale uh blue. Lots of white in this one. Still in the back, trying to get that light, uh, uh, light reflections in the back. I'll uh, put some waves in there. Got a little fan brush that works good. Put some light streaks in there. Those will be your waves. And then underneath those waves, I'm taking a little small brush and I'm going into um, a little bit of phthalo, phthalo blue. I'm just touching underneath that water movement. It helps bring out, you know, you can see it so much better. Then I'm going into Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to start making my rock rocky formation on the right side brown with a little touch of uh, black because I want this fairly dark. Now you'll see I have uh, probably a little too much paint there so what I'm doing is putting a, a shop towel. I will put a shop towel over that and uh, then I'll be able to bring that color out a lot better. I'm just blending that in, but you see it's kind of faded. So there, I take a shop towel and just taking some of that excess paint off. There, see how much that, that really helps, taking some of that underneath off. And I'm just going into Van Dyke Brown with a touch of black, and I'm just creating a, a rock formation back there that's coming outward. Because eventually I'm going to have a nice palm tree that's going to jut out from uh, those rocks. I'm going into a little black with a little tiny fan brush. And I'm going to lift up there on that hillside. And you see it looks like little trees growing way on the top. Just kind of flick some of those uh, that black up little tiny lines, looks like trees. All right, so I'm gonna put another rock formation in the front of that. Again, a little too much paint, so I'm gonna take some of that off so I'll be able to uh, finish, finish my rock formations there. Gonna bring that down a little bit. Got a palette knife. I'm putting a little color on that, but I end up making it uh, just putting more uh, dark black and uh, Van Dyke over that because I want it fairly dark. Okay, I've got a little liner brush. I'm going to start etching in, um, oh, some distant, uh, they almost look like birch trees. But just little trees in, in the back of that, on um, that uh, first for, formation there. So now I'm bringing that front rock there. I'm going to, so I'm kind of learning as I go. I'm, I'm changing it too as I go, so bear with me. So I'm curving out my uh, shoreline. I'm just kind of figuring out where I want uh, my water and my shoreline and where my rocks are going to be. So I'm just filling that area in. All the way down to the bottom. So now I've got it's a mixture of Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and I'm doing the base work for the sand that's going to be there. It's going to look kind of weird now, but I will add blues later on the top. I just want 
the sandy browns uh, first. Blending, blending those in, that in. And I'll work on my rocks here after a bit. I want to get get my shoreline in so I know uh, where I'm at. <clears throat> so I'm just keeping my lines really straight. Some of your uh, uh, liquid white will pick up there. So I'm just putting in some darker areas, adding a little bit of phthalo, just a little bit, introducing some blues in there. Going into that uh, dark brown, a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Forming some shadows in there. This area is going to be kept pretty dark. Keeping my line straight. Like I say, this is uh, the base, you know, the base. All right, so now I'm at the shoreline. I've got a palette knife. And I'm going to start shaping my, uh, the water lines that's coming in on the shore, the shore. You just get a little tiny um, roll of white and you can really make it look good and I'm using the small end of my knife for the tight areas the curve see how that works really cool doesn't it just curve it around and I'm taking a fan brush I'm just gently stretching out my my white from the water and the little tiny uh, script liner there, I'm just kind of touching up where the water is, spreading it out. Water lines to the back side. Okay, I've got a little tiny fan brush. I'm going to put in some waves in the distance. Just squiggling, squiggling some white in there. And then going underneath with a little bit of phthalo and white, like the shadow part of the wave underneath. Okay, now I am back at the rock formation there. I'm going to bring, I decided to bring that all the way down. Got some dark brown, Van Dyke brown with a touch of black. And just gonna oh adding adding some rocks here and there small small rocks I guess they could call them boulders but they're gonna kind of a cove like there so I'm just etching some uh, rocks in there Tiny little brush works good. So I'm just going along and uh, Putting in in little rocks. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to bring in another uh, little rock formation. Kind of angle it down on the sh right on the shore there, and then I'll fill it in. You don't have to be too fussy with that. Yeah, look nice. 
Okay, so I'm just on a liner brush. I've got a little bit of white. I'm going to just tip the edge of that rock a little bit and then smudge it with my finger. Put a little highlight there. And I'm going to took my uh, palette knife. I'm just angling, putting a little water in there, pulling it out from from the rocks, kind of make it look natural. And with the palette knife, I've got some real light blue. And that's phthalo and white. And I'm going to go underneath uh, some of those little rock formations, those rocks that I have in the shoreline. It's going to look like little water, uh, water marks, water coming in there. Gives it a nice little touch. And then you can smudge some of those out with your finger too. Just adding some water lines. Okay, so now I'm going to add a club. Uh, Palm trees. Got some Van Dyke brown, touch of black. And I want that uh, palm tree to, to rest right on the closest uh, formation that's closest. And then just bring that down, put a little trunk in there. And then I'm going to take a uh, fan brush with a little bit of white, titanium white, and I'm going to start brushing a little cr uh, a crossways over that trunk. Put little white lines in there, almost kind of like a birch, but it's just the trunk has got some texture. And you're going to want to see where it ends up there uh, into that rock formation. So I take a little bit. On a brush there, and just put a nice line there, so you can tell where the trunk ends up. Just putting uh, little white lines here and there, and then I'm going to go back on that distant trunk in the back to just tip that a little bit. And now I'm going to add. Uh, uh, some more, they look like birch trees. I'm just putting them in the distance. But they're actually palm trees. And you can put little, tiny little uh, palm leaves on there. Too. So I've got a liner. And the, just the one in the back, I'm uh, just going to use a script liner. And just do some tiny little brush strokes that look like those palm leaves. Because it's so far away, it's hard to get a, a, a fan brush in there. So I am tipping that other side rock there formation with a little lighter weight on that. Okay, now I'm going to go into Van Dyke Brown. It's I'm going to make this dark because uh, it's a dark area, dark Van Dyke Brown, touch of alizarin crimson, and I do practice first on a paper plate. And then when I get it just right, then I'm going to go for it. Because you only get a couple of good swipes at a time. Because <laughs> you have to reload. Load up and then just a light touch, angle, and down. Like I say, you can't go over too many times because you'll lose those nice, sharp little points on those uh, leaves. So I'm just angling around. The wind is blowing towards it, so the leaves are going back. Just go around. You can probably put as many as you want. I'm I'm going to keep it to a minimum here. I think it's prettier with a little bit less. 
sometimes you can get carried away. <laughs> Now probably there, I've got one good one there. I'm going to touch the inside there. I might make it look like it has a couple of coconuts in there. There we go. Well, that was fun. So now I've got a little bit of uh, titanium with a touch of phthalo making a kind of an icy blue. I want to put a little bit of light on those since it is reaching for that moon. Just very gently swish over the tops of those leaves. Wow, I almost see a finished painting. Getting close. Finish these up a little bit. I really love doing this one, and I hope you do too. So until next time, happy painting, and God bless.